Hi, welcome back to Sewing Together with Sarah. Today, I am going to be showing you how to make scrunchies. This is a really super easy method. Um, I've had some of my students um, try different methods and they get frustrated uh, because they're not very easy to do. So I'm gonna show you how to do that today. And um, the majority of this video is gonna be um, at my personal um, sewing machine. So um, you see my face here in the beginning and then um, I'll put it back on me at the very end. So let's get started. Okay, so what you are going to need to get started is you're going to need um, a strip of fabric that is 17 inches long and three and a half inches wide. This partic particular fabric that I have here is a stretch knit fabric, um, but you can also use cotton. This particular fabric also, it wants to roll on you. Not all knit fabric will um, curl um, at the ends. Um, which can make it a tad bit of a challenge, but it's actually not that bad and definitely easy for beginners. The other thing that you're going to need is one eighth inch wide elastic or a quarter inch wide elastic. And this is um, eight inches long. So the elastic is cut to about half the length of your um, strip of fabric. And depending on how thick your hair is, really will depend on how um, short or long um, you want your elastic to be, but eight inches long is um, a good measurement to start with. Um, and then of course you'll need some pins and um, sewing machine and coordinating thread. So let's get started. The first thing that you're going to do is you are going to fold your fabric in half lengthwise. And I'm gonna pause for a moment because I need to um, plug my iron in. Okay, so you will need an iron. So uh, we're gonna fold this in half lengthwise. And what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm gonna um, If you're using cotton fabric, um, you might wanna go ahead and um, press it so you have a nice crease, but you really, you actually really don't need to. So the next thing that we're gonna do, um, actually the other item that you need is a ruler. So I just happen to have this hem gauge. And what we wanna do is we want to measure, we're gonna put our hem gauge um, at two inches and um, we want to measure two inches in from each um, side. So we're gonna measure two inches in from this side, measuring two inches in, and then two inches in from this side. So I'm going to line it up right here, and I'm going to get a marking pen. So I apologize, I wasn't very thorough in what you needed. So, <laughs> In addition to what I shared with you, you need um, a ruler of some kind and you need a fabric marking pen. So I'm gonna put a line right here up at the top, right at the two inch mark, okay? And then I'm gonna come over and I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Just right at the top of the unfinished edge. I'm gonna set that aside. The next thing that we're going to do, making sure that our edges are still lined up, we're gonna pin at the two inch marks. So I'm gonna put a pin here or just a little bit ahead of it because we're actually going to sew from this mark to the other two inch mark. So I'm just going to go ahead and pin along the top edge here, down to the other two inch mark. Now when you're dealing with um, knit stretch fabric, this is actually, if you've never dealt with knit or stretchy fabric, this would be a good beginner project because then you'll get a good idea of um, 
how you need to work with it. It's, it's different than using just regular cotton fabric. Regular cotton fabric doesn't stretch. Um, so you can pretty much, um, uh, handle it without any, um, issues, but with the stretch knit fabric, you actually have to handle it a little bit more loosely because it will stretch and you definitely don't want to line up your edges and stretch your fabric as you go because then if you go to sew it, it's not going to sew correctly. You might have some puckers and, and whatnot. So let me, I'm almost finished here. You have to really be intentional and deliberate when you line up knit fabric. Um, okay, so now what we're going to do is I'm gonna start sewing and I'm going to um, sew following the edge of my presser foot you could um, sew using uh, the edge of my presser foot is approximately one half to three eighths inch wide from the needle to the edge. You could sew using a quarter inch um, seam allowance, but I find that with um, this width, the three and a half inch width and using the edge of the presser foot um, gives you a, uh, a pretty decently wide, very usable wide um, uh, scrunchie. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to, um, I wouldn't worry too much about um, using a, um, a stretch needle for knit. Um, you know, if you're making a garment out of stretch fabric, you definitely wanna switch out to a stretch needle or um, not a stretch needle, but a jersey needle. Um, and I wouldn't worry too, I wouldn't worry about setting your stitch for the scrunchies on a zigzag because the elastic is what's going to make your scrunchie stretch. So we won't really need to worry about straight stitches popping on a stretch fabric. So I just have my stitch width at your standard two and a half uh, millimeter. And I am going to back stitch at both ends um, of the marks. So let me put my needle down and let's go. I do not sew over my pins. I've had uh, too many pins snap and too many needles break. So I'm not holding, if I were to hold this and sew, I would be stretching it out. That's another thing with stretch fabric is you definitely don't wanna hold on to it when you're sewing. You just wanna let the feed dogs do their job and your, uh, your job is to just make sure that you're keeping the edge of your fabric lined up with whatever seam allowance that you're using. And we're coming up to the other two inch mark. We're going to clip our threads. Oh, that one bunched up a little bit. That's all right. You won't see it. Okay, so now I've got my stitch all along that edge. And we have the ends are not sewn. And you'll see how that all works here in a minute. So now I'm going to take this and I'm gonna turn it right side out, which can be a little bit of a pain, <laughs> but this isn't a really long tube. So um, it's actually not too terribly bad. You just have to kind of work it out.
All right, I'm almost there. Almost got it pulled out here. If you see here a um, an engine revving in the background, my personal sewing room is above the garage and uh, my husband's is in there working and he's um, working on one of our vehicles and uh, the engine is revving. So anyway, okay, so now we have this fully turned out. And as you can see, here's here's our seam that we sewn. You see this the, the seam line here. The next thing that we're going to do is we're actually gonna fold this in half. And what you don't want to happen is, is you see your seam here, you don't want it to get twisted when you fold it in half. So what I do is I just make sure that the seam is either down flat, down on my table, on my work surface, or facing up at me when I fold it in half. I'm just gonna fold it so that the seam is facing down, and I'm gonna fold this in half, and what I'm gonna do is now these open ends, I'm gonna actually line these up now, open these up, line them up at the uh, unfinished or raw edges of the fabric, and I'm gonna pin it in place. And then we're going to sew this little section. And this is what will create the opening um, of our scrunchie to insert our elastic. Again, um, when you're using knit stretch fabric, this part, you don't want to stretch the fabric when you're lining it up. You just want to line, line it up without stretching it and it'll line up. It'll, it'll be nice and even. You don't have to worry about that. Your ends will be nice and even. You shouldn't have any overlapping or underlapping at the ends and then you just pin it in place. Now the next thing that we're going to do is we're gonna sew using the same, um, the edge of our presser foot for our seam allowance. And now we're gonna sew along here. It's a little bit awkward because you have it kind of bunching up right in here, but um, if you just go nice and slow, um, it should work out just fine. So we're just gonna put this under here and I'm gonna start in a little bit from the edge here um, and then I'm going to back stitch to the edge and then go forward and the reason for that is that if I start too close to the top the needle will have a tendency to push this part of my fabric down into the opening where my uh, bobbin thread comes out and then it'll get stuck in there and I don't want to do that so I'm going to I'm going to put my needle down about where this pin is and then I'm going to back stitch first and then go forward and then sew all the way to the other end and then back stitch at that end. So I'm gonna remove that pin, put my needle down. I'm going to back stitch first and then go forward. And then by getting it started like that, it you have um, there's least um, there's less of a chance for that corner to get stuck down into that hole. So without stretching, I'm just following along the edge here. I'm not stretching the fabric or anything like that. I'm just position, repositioning it and laying it nice and flat, being real loose with it. We don't wanna stretch it. Clip our threads. Okay. So now we have our seam. So when we go to fold it like this, now we have the opening for our elastic, for our scrunchie. So our scrunchie is looking almost like a scrunchie. Now we just need the elastic to make it do the scrunching. So um, you can press this open with your iron What's happening here is that this seam is naturally pressing open because of the kind of knit fabric that it is. So it's it's actually pressing open for me, which is great. But you can use your iron and press it open as well. Um, but what we wanna do now is we want to um, insert our elastic. And um, one more item that we need, and I happen to use for this, I happen to use, um, well, you 
can actually, I'll show you. Actually, I don't use a safety pin, but you can. So if you were to use a safety pin, insert it at the end of the elastic and then feed it through. Now keep in mind, your elastic is half the, the length of your scrunchie. So you can use a safety pin and you're just gonna feed it through this opening. And what you don't wanna do is when you go to pull it, you obviously you know, wanna hang on to this or anchor it somehow so that it doesn't keep going through. But what I do is I just hold on to it and I just keep feeding the elastic through until we get back to the opening. So I'm almost there. Okay, so now we're back at the opening and now we have both of the ends coming out of the opening. So I'm gonna take the safety pin off. And now what I do, um, eighth inch and quarter inch elastic is really kind of, especially eight inch latch, eight, eight, one eighth inch wide elastic is really difficult to sew. I, when scr with scrunchies, I don't even bother. So what I do is I just um, stretch this out and I line up the ends and I just tie them in a knot like this. And I kind of pull that knot close to the ends of the, of the elastic. And so now I have a knot, okay? Now what we can do is we can pull it in and now we've got, our scrunchie is almost finished. So now what we're going to do is we need to close that opening now. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold in the edge right where one of the seams is. I'm gonna fold that in about the width of our seam allowance. I'm gonna fold in the other edge right here. And then I'm going to line up those seams right on top of each other and I'm gonna Put a pin and I'm gonna hold that together and what we're gonna do is we're going to fold in those edges where the opening is and you'll notice it will kind of once we've started that first fold the rest of the opening wants to fold in as well and then without stretching we're just going to fold those in and, and get it closed and then I'm gonna pin it so it stays closed and we're going to sew right close to the edge, not off of the edge, but close to it so that we get the fabric that we folded in, the edge that we folded in, we wanna make sure that that gets sewn in because if we sew too far down into the scrunchie, these ends will pop out and we don't want that. So we wanna make sure that if we sew close to the ends, close to the edge of um, the fold there, of our opening, then we know that that will, that it'll stay in there and our uh, unfinished edges won't pop out. And um, we wanna start, so my opening starts about right here. And I'm gonna start in a stitch or two before that and then I'm, we're gonna back stitch and we're gonna sew all the way along the top edge. And then I my opening ends about right here. Sometimes I like to put a pin at where the opening starts and stops so that I know where uh, to put my needle down and so that I, I actually sew it completely closed. Now, the only this will actually be the only time that you want to stretch out your scrunchie to sew the opening. You don't want to sew it with it scrunched up like this because it will stay scrunched up like that. You wanna make sure that when you go to sew it that you actually stretch it out and make it nice and flat. So let's go ahead and do that. Just make sure that on the back side that you don't have any puckers or pleats that you accidentally sew. Try and uh, have it as flat as possible. Now you won't be able to see my thread very well because I have blue thread in here and it matches the uh, blue thread of my um, scrun or the blue fabric of my scrunchie. So I'm just following the edge. Make sure you backstitch. 
I'm just following close along the edge, almost up to the needle, but not over the needle. So I'm gonna stretch. Almost forgot to stretch there. <laughs> so excited to get this done. I need a new scrunchie. Um, we have a cat that if I leave my scrunchies out, he if he finds them, he likes to chew holes in them. So um, this will actually be uh, one of the scrunchies that I need to replace. Okay, we're almost finished. So these scrunchies, you can, once you've done a couple of them, they go really fast. So there is our scrunchie. So this scrunchie will actually replace my black one because my black one has a hole in it from my cat. So now this is one of my new scrunchies. And so there you go. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to sew a scrunchie and we'll see you next time on Sewing Together with Sarah.